there are two more notions. So last week, we, have, uh, we talked about uh, speech and thought representation. We talked about the patterns. We talked about characteristics. Now, there are two more notions that I want to introduce today. And um, in, when, when we talked about speech reporting, we usually talk about when it's indirect speech, right? We usually talk about the use of uh, the, word, the word that, right? Some people call it the complementizer that um, to introduce the speech, right? So there is the verb of reporting. Reporting verb plus this, right? And then speech. But nowadays, in modern English, we can use other um, complementizers, including like and the reporting verb to go. Okay? So um, you'll see examples here. But instead of using the word that, people nowadays, especially in conversation, they use the word like or they just use the word go, like that. Okay? Um, so that's one notion. The second notion is the notion of constructed dialogue. And last week we talked about um, direct speech, right? Direct reporting and indirect reporting. And we say that direct reporting is when you keep the wording verbatim, right? So that's when you keep the wording verbatim, meaning that uh, in principle, at least, in principle, when you do direct reporting, the words, the original wording will be kept the same, right? But um, in fact, in real life, uh, due to our memory, we cannot always do direct reporting because our memory doesn't allow us to repeat everything that um, another person has said before. Especially you cannot reproduce like the intonation, you cannot reproduce the same context over and over again, right? So in real life, in practice, there's no such thing as direct reporting, right? Because when you report something, even though directly, you take it out of context and you put it in a new context, and so it's not always the same, even though the wording is the same, okay? So the notion of constructed dialogue comes in when um, you do it as if it was direct reporting, but in fact, it was not. You construct the dialogue yourself. So it's something that you, are, you make up yourself. So this is a uh, situation when you, uh, the narrator is talking about a visit to a pet store. So a store that sells pets, right? Uh, a store that sells dogs or cats or whatever. So she went in and then she saw two dogs in a small cage, okay? Um, we can call it a kennel. Kennel is like a small cage, uh, a, a, case, a, a cage for a dog, okay? So, uh, so she, she saw two dogs in a, a kennel. So she said, she, 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 she's telling you the experience. They all look weird, okay? Um, they are like, oh, I'm real worried about my cage. I don't think I get enough room. Oh, stop biting my ear. And then the other guy, meaning the other dog, right? The other guy is like, oh, I'm always sad. I think if I chew on your ear, I'll feel better, right? So um, this shows you what we call the construct dialogue because in reality, how could dogs say something, right? No, dogs could not say anything. So this is what we call constructed dialogue because this is what she creates herself, right? And not in reality, even though it's reported like real, like uh, direct reporting, right? And you see uh, the use of like here, to be like, uh, um, rather than that. And also, mm, maybe the verb go is here? No, the verb go is not here, but uh, you see the word uh, like instead of that. So if you want to sound more natural, um, in real life, uh, you use like or go. Okay? And go is usually in the present tense too, like she goes like that. Okay, even though you're telling uh, about things that happened in the past. So like is the same thing. Okay? So these are two notions, okay? Um, you can use like or go and also um, the notion of constructed dialogue, which might, might sound like or might appear like direct reporting, but actually is not, okay? Because it's something that you construct yourself or the reporter constructs uh, him or herself, but it didn't really happen, okay? Now, um, to wrap up speech reporting, uh, we have looked at several uh, examples of speech reporting, right? But today, I will uh, uh, we'll just uh, 
uh, combine everything in this kind of um, diagram here or table. So I say that there are five mentions uh, of speech and thought reporting, and these are different uh, dimensions that can be uh, combined, can be mixed and matched, uh, depending on the writer's or the reporter's purpose. Um, so the first dimension that uh, we have to look at is the voice. So whose voice is it? Who or what is presented as a source of the reported language, right? So that's the, the first dimension. Um, we'll see examples later on in a minute. And then the second dimension is the message. So how, um, how the original language is presented, is it like direct reporting, is it indirect reporting, or is it a mixed type, and so on. So we'll look at that. And then the third dimension is the signal. So the way in which the reporter indicates that this is a language report. So uh, in direct reporting, uh, you usually use quotation marks, for example, right? And in free, indirect, free uh, direct reporting, you don't need the frame and you don't need the quotation marks and so on. So that's what we mean by the signal. And then the attitude. So the evaluation uh, by the present reporter of the message of the original speaker. So the verb, like last week, we looked at verbs, verbs like complain, right? Or verbs like scold, for example, or verbs like urge, and so on, announce or review, right? So that has to do with the attitude of the reporter, right? And finally, um, the purpose. So the reason for which uh, the uh, reporting speech, the reported speech is used, okay? So if you look at dimension one, uh, the voice, uh, there can be so many types of voice that can be involved in speech reporting. You can report yourself as saying or thinking, right? I promise I won't keep you a moment longer. So the source of the reported speech the, or thought here, I won't keep you a moment longer, so I promise the source is yourself, okay? Or a specified other. The aim of the research is to persuade people to accept new claims. And then you have here um, as, let's say, Krista, as the original speaker or as the original writer. So that is the source, okay? So you know that this statement comes from here, the source being Krista and so on. So, and, and we are not talking about the way that uh, we uh, report this, the clause here, direct or indirect, because that's the, 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 the message, right? But um, we're talking about the, the, the source here. And unspecified other, like n n uh, now you, you don't know what the source is. Uh, now there's a suggestion that these purchases will have to put down 25% down payment. Um, so there's a suggestion from whom. We don't know, right? So that's why we say that it's unspecified, okay? Um, and then finally, we have community or impersonal source, meaning a, a source that's not personal, a source that might be like the belief that people hold in the society or um, maybe a, dic a definition from the dictionary, for example, that's impersonal, so not, not personal, not person, right? So like the definition from the dictionary. The dictionary defined reported speech as something like that. So that's community or imp impersonal source. So when I got there, I was late, and the only thing left for me was a donut, right? So he got to a party, for example, or he got to uh, a place where he can, uh, can receive food, and then the only thing left for him was a donut. Well, beggars can't be choosers. So that's like a proverb, right? It means that if you don't have money, if you are poor, you cannot choose anything. You just have to make do. You just have to endure what is given to you without making any choices, okay? So that's like proverb, so it's community or impersonal voice, right? Now, dimension two. So we talked about the source, right? The source can be anything, right? Yourself, could be some, some other people, could be uh, community and so on. And now, the message. The message has to do with the kind of the form, how you present um, your um, reporting, reported speech. So direct speech, Jun Song is not good without money, Kyung Mo reviewed. So in this case, you see here is like direct speech and you know the source. This is the source. So we're not talking about the source now, we're talking about the form of the reported uh, message, right? So this is direct speech because this is the exact word that, that he, he, he told me, for example. Um, 2.2. 2. 
indirect speech, you can do it indirectly. Uh, we talked about this. Indirect speech is just a, a way to paraphrase things, right? So it's also a well-known fact amongst friends that Jin Song is quite a player. Here, this is a paraphrased version of what Kyung Mo uh, may have said. So this, again, is indirect speech, okay? Uh, player here is not football player, you know that, right? <laughs> it's another type of player, okay? Uh, mixed or selective. Uh, Kim let us, mixed or selective meaning you have a mix of both um, the direct and indirect speech in the same statement. Kim led a meeting of the Central Military Commission and set forth important tasks for further developing the Korean People's Army and ways to do so, KCNA news agency said. So this is the source, KCNA. But here we have both the, um, the indirect and also the direct reporting here within the same statement. So we call that a mixed uh, way or selective way. Okay? Uh, they select this because uh, to, to report it uh, verbatim because they think that it's like um, significant or important. Uh, uh, then next we have summary. The article quite rightly, uh, rightly criticizes North Korea actions. Here, the summary means that you just don't talk about the exact wording or you don't present a paraphrased version of something. So you don't have a direct wording uh, reported or you don't have any paraphrase, but you just summarize what he or she did, okay? Criticize as how, we don't know. We don't know the wording of criticism. So in this case, we call it summary. And finally, omission. Omission meaning um, you just omit the wording at all, okay? In December, the Ministry of Education issue orders. We don't know what kind of order, order to do what, right? Uh, to universities across the nation, we don't know what type of order or what the orders say, and so on. So that's omission. Okay. Um, next one, we have uh, the signal. So we talked about the source, we talked about the form, right? And now we talked about signal. How do you signal um, reported speech, uh, reported discourse? Um, you can do that in the main clause, and it's separated, um, uh, and the verb of reporting, or the reporting word is, the reporting frame is in the main clause. So for example, Bank of England officials were dismissive of suggestions that measures were needed against insolvent people. Insolvent people, uh, insolvent people are people who cannot pay their debts, okay? So people who borrow a lot of money but they cannot pay their debts and they will be bankrupt, okay? So here, suggestion is in the main clause, right? It's in the main clause. Were dismissive of suggestion so it's in the main clause, and then you have uh, the reporting word in uh, the kind of the subordinate clause, but the, the signaling word itself, that the reporting frame is in the main clause, so we call that it's in the main clause. Or it's in the subordinate clause like this, as everyone agrees, Krista is the best professor in Hanyang, right? <laughs> so in this case, it's in the subordinate clause, right? As everyone agrees, so that's a way to say, to signal that what follows is gonna be your reported speech. Um, and then we have fused, uh, no separate reporting signal piece. Uh, the lecture was interrupted by the latecomers. I'm sorry, I was late. Uh, in this case, you can see that it's not, uh, why we say that it's in the main clause, but there's no like separate reporting signal piece here, right? So it's just fused within, so it's, it, it works like a noun phrase or something, right? There is no word that signals like agree or suggestion. There is no, nothing like that. So we say that it's fused, it's included. Right? Um, dimension four, uh, attitude. So attitude has to do with evaluation or assessment, right? So how you evaluate or how you assess or how you judge uh, the original speaker or the message, right? So you can have neutral, positive, or negative. Uh, as the saying goes, the early bird catches the worm. We, we talked last week about the uh, verbs like tell, uh, reply, go, and so on, right? Or say, and we say that they are neutral in terms of attitude. And positive, you can have positive verbs like Kista points out, points out here is positive, meaning that he says it with certainty, for example, okay? Or negative, Al Kyung Wan is a very shy person, or so they say. So, or so they say here um, is kind of a, an expression in English that 
that, that indicates that this, the, reporter, the, the reporter of this whole thing uh, is not sure, uh, doesn't agree with this fact, right? So somebody might, must have claimed that he's a very shy, but the reporter says add, or the reporter adds, or so they say, meaning uh, the reporter is not sure or doesn't agree with uh, that claim or that statement, okay? So uh, when you say, so they say, or so she said, so he said, uh, you know that the reporter is not certain or doesn't agree, necessarily agree with the statement. Uh, finally, we have the purpose. When you, uh, this probably is the thing that we haven't talked about, and, uh, but it's important. Uh, why do you think people use reported speech um, when they tell you something? So one of the functions is that when they tell you something, um, they could use the reported speech to tell you the story itself. So the reported speech will drive the um, story forward chronologically, right? So we have narrative function of reported speech, meaning that um, um, when you have a quote, uh, whether it's direct or indirect, it will lead to another event and it will lead to a chronological development of the event. Chronological has to do with time. So, um, so somebody said this and this happened and so on. So that's the narrative function of reported speech, like this one. But the tumor, uh, tumor is like a big um, growth of tissues, right? Uh, but the tumor kept getting bigger and bigger it has grown this big. So I went to the vet and he said it would, I would, it would be best to have it operated so I had her or the dog operated. So in this case you see that the reported speech here and it's part of the whole story, right? That because he said this first and the operation came afterward. So we, we say that this reported speech has the narrative function. And most of the time, your, uh, your reported speech will have this function when you tell people a story because it's like, because this person says this, this happened next, and so on. So it has that narrative function. Now, uh, but the narrative function is not the only uh, function that uh, your reported speech will have. Uh, there are non-narrative functions such as evaluative functions. So in this case, you evaluate or you assess or you judge um, the original speakers um, or the original statement, um, um, let's see, so it's your opinion, okay? So, for, for example, this one, I don't like my sister that much. I wasn't happy, because my senses were telling me I'm wrong. Uh, but after all, I wasn't wrong. In this case, uh, it's not narrative, because it doesn't uh, have to do with any chronological events, like this happened first, and somebody said it, or I said it, and then something happened afterward. But here, uh, my censors were telling me I'm wrong. So she's, uh, the speaker, he or she, is talking about uh, the fact that she wasn't happy. So she judged it, uh, it's her opinion that, uh, no, that wasn't quite right. The, 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 uh, the feeling that uh, he or she uh, didn't like uh, si the sister. Okay, so it, it involves opinion or judgment, but it doesn't have to do with the uh, temporal or time um, uh, or organization of events, so it's not narrative. Okay, so this is evaluative. So when it has to do with opinion or when, when it has to do with um, uh, judgment of some sort, uh, you have this evaluative function. Okay? Uh, the next one, we have support function. Uh, the support function, uh, comes into play when, when um, it illustrates, when the reported speech uh, illustrates or enhances an argument or another statement, okay? So here, my parents are so strict, so she's telling you the story, right? My parents are so strict, most of the time they make my life miserable with don't do that and don't scream like that and stop jumping. So here, there are examples, right? Examples that support the argument that they make my life miserable. How? By saying along, uh, many times, don't do this, don't do that, don't scream like that, stop jumping. So these are examples that support the fact that uh, uh, her life, his or her life is miserable. So that's why we say that they have supporting function because um, they support the statement, right? Okay. 
Um, or another example, uh, I love Yeats, and according to Professor Ick, Yeats was the greatest poet of all time. So in this case, uh, it supports the, uh, you know, according to this authority, right, Professor X, Yeats very great, so everyone should love Yeats. Um, now, last one, uh, undermine the credibility of another source. So when you have support, this is the opposite of uh, support, right? So undermine is to like lessen, to lower the effect of the original statement, right? So you have support, and this is the opposite. Uh, the man, this is from a trial. Uh, the man took the knife in his right hand, uh, he being a right-handed person, and could not therefore cut his hand in that way. He said, so this is, the, or, uh, this, this is the narrative, right? He said he had this wound a fourth night, like two weeks ago. But upon the examination of the surgeon, it was found that this wound bled afresh and had uh, been very lately received, and so on. So the wording of the surgeon here contradicts with the wording of the, the defendant. So you see that they use the wording of the authority uh, here in order to contradict that he lied and so on. So this is the function of the underlying reporter's speech. Okay? So all in all, today uh, we wrapped up um, the several dimensions of reporting uh, speech, right? Uh, starting from the voice, the message, the signal, the attitude, and the purpose. And again, these can be mixed and matched um, in, in the sense that um, you could have anything. You could have uh, an unidentified source that is reported directly with whatever purpose and so on. Okay, so they can be mixed and matched. Uh, now, what I would like you to do is, um, let's see. What I would like you to do is uh, maybe to start off with the uh, with the uh, story um, on the third page um, on the, um, of the handout here. So I took this story from uh, the Korea Herald, and it was uh, presented maybe a month ago, um, and it has to do with. Um, the kind of the phenomenon that's kind of prevalent, prevalent in Korea right now. So the author is talking about the fact that for some college students, F is better than, an F is better than a B. And ministry pushes schools to tackle rampant cross credit laundering. Uh, so to tackle is to solve the problem, right, to deal with. And rampant is like going around uh, violently, so it's something that's growing a lot, going around and um, abundantly and violently. Uh, course credit laundering. Launder, what does it mean? Launder is to wash, right? To wash, to wash something, you do laundry, for example. But metaphorically speaking, metaphorically speaking, when you wash something, you make it clean. So when you launder, you grade. It means that you are a new person from F to an A plus for something, so you are a new person, clean, and so on, right? So, launder can be used with image, personal image. For example, Jin Song has to launder the image of a player. So he has to launder, he has to make it clean again. So launder is make it clean. So it can be used with image, it could be used with money, like illegal money that you get from selling drugs, for example. So. So this uh, whole thing will talk about <laughs> what college students in Korea like to do when they receive um, some, uh, a grade that's not so good. Like maybe they receive a B, right? So a B is usually good, right? But for them, it's not good. So they have to launder it, and they want an F instead so that they can redo it. They can launder themselves. So what I would like you to do is to go through this uh, story and underline the reported uh, clauses. And, and when you s see a reported uh, speech event, uh, can you uh, analyze that reported event in five dimensions that we talked about earlier today? So let me give you an example. Uh, we start out with um, maybe the first paragraph. Um, the first paragraph, so National University um, held its graduation ceremony on Wednesday and presented honor student awards for those who finished with grade point averages higher than 3.6 in 
out of 4.3. So that's the highest, right? 4.3 is the highest. And if you get higher than 3.6, you get honors, right? Uh, there's no reported speech here, so we skip. So in a bizarre twist, however, so it's weird, right? So th this is how the reporter uh, signals his or her attitude. So it's strange, he said. Uh, the number of honor students nearly equal the number of ordinary students. So, I mean, that's not, that's not like um, what usually happens, right? Because you have only few honor students, but here you have like equal number uh, for both. With the formal accounting for 44% of this amount of graduates, the percentages of honor students at the country's top university has increased by more than 10% in just three years. So that's a huge rise, right, um, in the uh, supply. And uh, now there's no reporting speech there, but here there's one. And SNU, so National University officials said it was great inflation in which an abnormally large number of students end up graduating with honors. So here, um, so you underline this, right? So, and we, we can talk about the five dimensions that we talked about earlier. So what type of, um, so let's start with the uh, voice. So who or what is the source of the reported speech here? It's clear, SNU official, right, is the source. Even though it's unnamed who, who exactly it is, but we know that it's one of the officials of SNU. So the source is an SNU official, so that's the source. Uh, the message, is it uh, direct reporting, uh, indirect reporting, meaning paraphrase, is it mixed, summary, or omission? It's not summary because you have the wording. It was great inflation, right? It's not omission because by definition, you know, if you don't have a summary, you cannot have an omission. So it's either direct or indirect or mixed. So in this case, it's mixed, right? Because you have just the selective quotation here, just a word or a noun phrase, and then everything else maybe, uh, everything else is not in the original uh, s statement, right? It was here is, is by the, 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 rep the reporter or the writer here. So it's mixed. And then the attitude, is it good, uh, neutral, positive or negative said? It's just neutral, right? And finally, the purpose. The purpose here, what is the purpose? We have narrative and non-narrative. Do you think that it's uh, narrative or not? So does it lead to other things or uh, does it need to, does it in, uh, involve any kind of opinion of the reporter? It doesn't have to do with cred, uh, support, right? Or it doesn't have to do with uh, undermine the credibility of another statement, right? So what might be the purpose here? So if you look at paragraph three in relation to paragraph two, so when we talk about the purpose, we have to look at the context, okay? So in paragraph two, it says that it's strange, it's unusual because the phenomenon is unusual because the amount or the numbers of uh, honors and non-honor students are quite the same. So in that case, that's the original uh, purpose of the second paragraph. The third paragraph, an SNU official said it was great uh, inflation. It here referring to the phenomenon in number two, right? So in this case, uh, the reporter of this whole piece uh, selects great inflation in order to say that that's, in order to state his opinion, right? That what is happening is great inflation. So inflation is not something that's desirable, right, in our society, because when you have inflation, you have money, but your money means less, meaning um, you can buy your purchasing power is down, okay? So, um, so great inflation, meaning everyone gets good grade, but grades do not mean anything. So this, again, is inserted there, is inserted in the reporter speech because the reporter wants to comment on this using the word of the SNU official commenting on the situation that is inflation, okay? So what we say that the purpose here is uh, evaluative, right? And there is a reporter speech here because the reporter just doesn't want to call it the inflation himself. So the reporter borrows the word of this SNU official 
just borrow that phrase, great inflation, to comment on the situation that's not desirable. Uh, it doesn't mean anything. Grades do not mean anything today using the word inflation. So it has an evaluative uh, purpose, okay? So that's how we uh, kind of talk, discuss the purpose of things. So as you can see, people can borrow uh, another person's uh, wording in order to comment on something else, okay? Because it's a good strategy, right? Because, because you are a reporter, you shouldn't use your own opinion, right? So you make it more, more objective, at least. You make it more objective by borrowing word from this guy, SNU official, okay? Now, so we have that, and then um, can you do for, uh, the same for the rest of the uh, story here? Uh, there should be, uh, so you should include both reporting, speech, and thought, okay? So I'll walk around and help you. So underline the reported uh, discourse first, speech or thought, and then we'll look at um, the functions. In this one, I forgot to mention the, the signal, right? So the signal, since the word that signals the reported event is here, said, right? So it's in the main clause. So we say that it's in the main clause. So we look at the re signaling word. So the signaling word is in the main clause, so it's the main clause thing. Um, I have got the same questions, um, the same questions um, over and over again. So I think I better uh, talk about this dimension one more time. So um, dimension three, the signal, right? So when we do reported speech, whether it's direct, indirect, mix, or whatever, or a summarized uh, version, um, there must be, or there should be, there's likely a signal word, right? So uh, when, how do you know that it's a reported speech event? Well, because of the signal word, right? And uh, so um, there are three cases. The first case is when the signaling word is in the main clause, right? So like this example, Bank of England officials were dismissive of suggestions that measures were needed against insolvent people, against people who cannot pay off their debts. Now, you know that the part from that to people, you know that that's a reported speech event. You know that, right? Because you see the word that, and also the signaling word is suggestion, right? So this is a normalized thing, right? You can say, uh, the Bank of England suggests that, right? So that's the normalized thing and unpacking of thing that we studied before. So this is the signaling word. So if the signaling word, meaning it signals, it gives you or give anyone that reads this, the signal that what follows is the report speech event. So the signaling word is here, and it's in the main clause. We say that it's the signaling word in the main clause, separate main clause. But on the other hand, if the signaling word is here, like the second example, as everyone agrees, Chris Dye is the best professor in Hanya, here, agree is the signaling word that the beginning of this uh, clause, Krisda, to the end at Hanyang, that's the reported speech event, indirect speech reporting. But the signaling word is here, so it's in the subordinate clause. We say that it's separate subordinate clause. Right? But in the third case, when you have a fuse or no separate reporting signal piece, uh, you just include the signaling word, uh, just, you just include the reported speech event somewhere without the signaling word. So the lecture was interrupted by the latecomers. I'm sorry I was late. Here, you don't have any signaling thing. You know that it's uh, indirect. Uh, you know that it's direct reporting because of the quotation marks. That's it, right? And it's included, it's fused in this um, head noun, the latecomers, and then apostrophe s, right? So it's fused. There's no signaling word that separates this thing from the main clause Right? It's not separated because it's fused within the main clause. Okay? So that's uh, how I would uh, classify the signal. Okay? So I'll give you maybe uh, five more minutes to finish this off, and then we'll discuss this together. Okay, guys, so let's uh, look at number four. Who would like to do number four? Does anyone like to? Sion, do you like to do number four? So number four, where's, this, uh, where's the um, reported speech event or reported thought event? 
do you see this, the second uh, clause? In a country drag, uh, dragged down by tepid economic growth, right? So uh, moderate growth or um, lack of enthusiasm, uh, a high GPA is considered an essential qualification for landing a job. So it's considered, that's uh, reported thought, right? So some people consider that, blah, 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 right? So some people consider that a high GPA is necessary and so on, right? So that's the, maybe the unpacking um, of, of, of that clause. So some people considered, or a lot of people, actually, the whole country maybe, the whole country considers that a high GPA is essential and so on, right? So that's reported uh, thought event. So um, in, terms of, um, in terms of the voice, uh, what is the source of this voice? A high GPA is considered like present tense and then um, in, this kind of, in, in a country, right? In this country, so it's the community, right? So it's the community. So the, vo the source is the whole community. So everyone in this society agrees that that's the uh, uh, current picture. So society and the message is indirect, right? So it's indirect speech or paraphrase. So the paraphrase thing is a high GPA is an essential qualification, right? So there's the speech there. And the signaling is uh, considered, right? Is, is considered, so that's the signaling. So it's considered, it's the main clause, right? And attitude here, considered just neutral, right? And what about the function? Why is, why is the reporter, um, like, why did the reporter choose to report people's thought here? Does it have to do with events? No, right? It's not like this guy said this, that guy said that, and something else happened. So it's non narrative in this case. So, and it doesn't undermine the credibility of someone, and it uh, doesn't really support anything, but it contains the opinion of the whole country, right? And the reporter selects the opinion of the whole country in order to comment on this kind of situation. So it has the evaluative function, right? Okay. And I believe that everyone believes it too, right? That high GPA is considered essential. And now, number five. Number five, we started off with um, direct quotation, right? So it's clear that it's direct quotation. In the job market, uh, the very basic quality of applicants is the college grade. And colleges, on the other hand, want more of its students to get hired in order to receive higher evaluation from the government, right? So that's why Han Yang has this uh, report, uh, report card for job seekers, right? Because we want to boost up our ranking Right? So, so it's like a win-win situation, right? So you guys can present yourself in a better light and we can receive like a uh, better ranking because it means that we teach you well, right? You, you all have good grades and so on, right? And so it's like win-win situation. So what kind of uh, reporting speech is that? Uh, the source is Mr. Yang Chung Ho, right? So that's the source of this uh, direct reporting, right? So the source is professor there, and is direct speech. And the signal, where's the signaling word? The signaling word is not there, but the signaling word is at the very end of the clause. Told, right, told, it, it, it's in the main clause, okay? So told is the signaling word. Now, but, uh, uh, let's see, so what else do you have? Signaling word and also uh, the attitude is neutral because it's told, and the purpose is support, right? So why do I say that it's support? Because the paragraph before, you said a high GPA is considered essential qualification. So that's the paragraph before. Now this guy, speech, supports that, right? Because the argument is GPA is important. Now he says about GPA, in the job market, the very basic quality of applicant is college grade. So the reported speech here supports the claim there. So it's supportive. So that's the function. That's what uh, news reporters always do, which is they will make a claim like that, 
the make a claim like that by selecting other people's word or thought, for example, and then they support the claim with what other people say. That would go in the same line, along the same line. Okay? And then we have another one here. Their corresponding interest gave birth to the practice of cross course credit laundering. Uh, in this one, we have uh, direct speech, and we have uh, Yang Chung Ho as the person who says it, and the signal is none. We don't have any signal, right? It's just a standalone clause, right? So it's the fuse type because we don't have anything that signals it except for the quotation marks that let you know that it's the direct reporting. And uh, neutral is neutral, and the narrative function is the same to support the statement in paragraph four. Okay? Um, so far, so good. Now, let's look at paragraph six. Paragraph six do not, I mean, in paragraph six, we do not see anything, right? So, um, so we can skip paragraph six. So we do not see any type of reported thought or speech. So we can look at seven. Seven, we have another form of laundering is the so-called report card for job seekers which omits the lowest F grades. Here, um, the source, we, we, we see that that's the kind of the term that people use in this country, right? So the source is uh, community again, right? Because that's the term that everybody uses in this country. But notice that <laughs> it's presented as direct speech, right? But people in this country do not call it report card for job seekers, it has to be a Korean term. So it's translated, but still, it, they, they try to make it like uh, faithful, uh, like the same as the source. So they translate it. But in fact, it's not the, the direct speech. So you can think of direct speech as, um, you, don't, you, you shouldn't think of direct speech as truly verbatim statement. You shouldn't think about like, like, like that. Now, uh, the signaling word is here, the so-called. So the signaling word is the so-called, right? And um, it's fused, right? Um, and it's uh, neutral. And it has the, in this case, the function that it has is the narrative function. You see, it starts off another paragraph. Another form of laundering is the so-called, right? So this is another reason, right? So this is like uh, the second reason. It has to do with the chronological event of the whole story. So this is the second reason because it's another form. So they talked about uh, one form already. So this is another form, so it has a narrative function. Okay. Um, I think that's it. And... Um, Number eight, uh, Mr. L volunteered to do it <laughs> due to my encouragement. So what do you think? Where's the source? Where's the source? Yes, thank you. Correct, Kim Hee Jung, right? So the source is that. Okay, the source is that. And signal, the signal word is where? Reviewed, right? So, good. So Kim Hye Jung <laughs> reviewed the data, that, and so on, right? So that's the signaling word. And it's in the subordinate clause, okay? And uh, what else do we need to look at? Uh, attitude, neutral, positive, or negative? Revealed, like making something secret into something good, right? In, into something non-secret anymore. So maybe positive, right? But the situation itself, I know, is, is not positive, right? It's negative. But the, review, the word reviewed itself uh, suggests that he makes it clear, right? So at least, according to the author's intention, maybe it's positive, right? Because this guy, or maybe girl, uh, says that it's, 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 
it's no secret anymore. Right? Um, and in this case, it's indirect speech, right? Because you have the message, but the message is not um, verbatim. Okay? And the function is the function is supporting function. So paragraph eight supports paragraph seven, right? So she's talking about the free report card, right? And remember, the supporting function has to do with examples that people give or some kind of um, more explanation that people give to another statement. So eight is like the elaboration or explanation on seven. Okay, so that has the supporting function. Now, uh, number 10, thank you, Mr. L. So next time you will do this again, I believe, because now you see the positive side of it, right? <laughs> Number 10, uh, we have, in December, the Education Ministry sought to end the custom of course credit laundering. Working with Korean Council for University Education, the ministry told all colleges to come up with plan to eliminate, elim eliminate the practice of issuing report cards that high failing grades. So in this case, they are talking about what happened, right? So the function is clearly narrative, so because it has to do with what happened. In December, this is what happened, and this is what she said, and what will follow, right? So the narrative function, and um, we have the source as the ministry, right? The ministry told, right? So the ministry is the source of the message, and the word told is the signaling word. And it is in the main clause, right? And it has a neutral attitude. And let's look at uh, 11 and 12 quickly. So 11 and 12, we can say both 11 and 12 because they are wording uh, of the ministry, okay? Uh, the ministry has been discussing and so on, and 12 so also, she said. So both 11 and 12, um, are the words of the, um, the um, PM here. Um, so we say that they have the supporting function because they support uh, paragraph 10, right? They are the details of paragraph 10. This is what she told, and then this is the real message that, that, that she said. So 11 and 12 support 10. So they have supporting function for 11 and 12, and the source is the same which is the ministry, okay? And in 11, um, in 11, the verb is where? Said, so that's the signaling word. And it's in the main clause, right? Said is the main clause. Right? And in 12, the signaling word is said, again, and is in the main clause. Okay, so um, since time is up, so we can come back and do the rest. Can you finish up the rest? And we'll do uh, modality, we'll switch gears to modality on Wednesday.